in the bleak midwinter, long ago, we rejoin our cannibalistic colonists here in Hexham. Our now four folks sleep soundly. Humphrey, not a full-fledged cannibal. The man is, however, callous and fits in here just fine. Since you last joined me, some finishing touches have been put on our keep. As you might be able to tell, that archway was finally put in place, as were the balcony doors. Out the front here, we have some extra merlons on that front wall and a nice little roof capping off of those pillars. And on its interior, Hexam for the most part is the same as it was. I did trial bring some beehives inside, as I figured the warmth might help, but yeah, bees not so keen on being stuck inside. And that is completely fair. We're yet to, at this stage, make some decent armour for our cannibals. Yet I hope to accomplish that before our next siege. We are still a little limited in resources in that regard. However, we should at the very least be able to create some light armour, as that uses just leather. And because I haven't had the chance to say it yet, Kia ora, Legionnaires, Rikon here and welcome back to Going Medieval. And things are going well considering we are in the middle of winter currently. The temperatures are low outside, but for the most part, things are really good in here. We do finally have Jonathan hammering away. Well, I guess, yeah, he is hammering away, but he's making some light armor at the moment. We do have three, but those three are considered either flimsy or just not very good. That's why we're not wearing them currently. So hopefully he will produce some armor worthy of our cannibals. Well, there we go. And it's sturdy. It's a race. Who's going to get there? Ah, uh, looks like Edith got it first. Oh boy, this is what happens when Lillian doesn't uh, haul. Uh, all of our fires have gone out. So we're going to get you back to hauling uh, right away. And we're going to stop you from convalescing. So uh, time for you to wake up, Lillian. And uh, like, like like now, thank you, please. Uh, I, I guess that's not going to happen, is it? Hmm. Oh, nope. There we go. She's refueling now. Uh, no, she's not. Okay. Ah. We're just going to make sure that we switch things onto wood for now. It is nice to leave wood for construction, but uh, right now, warmth. Warmth is what we need. I'm going to put in an order for coal as well, because I think it'll be worth us having a little bit of a stockpile of that. All right, Lelion, we've got some coal going. And thankfully, everyone is nice and toasty, thanks to your efforts there. And as we are going to need more wood and sticks, Jonathan, uh, sometimes Lumberjack, is heading out into those woods to get us some more. And it looks like this is the last little bit of chipping that we've got to do. Thank you, Humphrey. Let's get some flooring put down, and then we're going to build some more bookcases. Or rather, bookshelves. Well, yeah, we're certainly going to be in need of more wood, but I feel like that will do it. And you know what? For that one on the end, we're going to swap that out. Let's go for one of these, one of the wall-based ones. And I reckon we'll probably also do these along here just because uh i feel like it looks better that'll do uh we will need to leave a gap though won't we yeah let's cancel that one out good we can probably get rid of our weird little fence here as well not as necessary i think ah yes and let's have a look at mining out that ramp we don't want folks to be coming up and down here unfortunately though we can't get rid of this ramp over here it's uh outside of our area in which we can interact with things so people might still be able to climb over this mountain to us it'll certainly be more difficult for them to do it though oh oh I'm concerned about Jonathan's well-being. Are you okay, sir? What are you doing? He's getting experience, but... Oh. Are you trapped? Nope. He's okay. I think he was just... Oh, okay. I don't... <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. Uh, right. Well, Humphrey, you're, you're having a good time as well. And, and now you're free again. Hmm. I won't say I know what that was. It's some kind of new dance, maybe? Hmm. I'm, I'm just going to rescue Jonathan and then release him and see if he go, yep, goes back to that same spot. Right. Let's try and do this manually, buddy. How about that? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot better. Okay. You're free now. Go home. <laughs> 
With a bit of a sigh of relief, I can say that winter is over. We are now in spring, spring of the year 1355, which I believe means we've been here for two years now. And in those two years, we have made for ourselves quite the keep. I'm still looking forward to trying our art defenses against the next siege, but it's been a while. Perhaps our influence is spreading. And having a look at the region map, oh boy, yeah, it is. Our, our region influence is 98.7%. Reaching 100% influence means your settlement is the most influential in the region. So we're nearly there. Victory in battle, repelling enemy raids, it increases our influence faster, and we've been doing a fair amount of that. And of course, looking at this, we can see that uh, most are quite hostile towards us. However, like the Oaken Brethren, even though we've screwed them over time and time again, killing them, <laughs> killing their merchants, they're pretty chill with us. Uh, Kingdom of York, not so much, and the Faithful Sons of England, same deal there. Church of the Third Coming, okay, all right. I mean, it is interesting to see how they are uh, <laughs> lined up. You might also notice a lot of running about, and the main reason for that is everyone has hauling as their number one priority now. It's something that I'm trialing out, just to see if it will increase our efficiency here. Alright, looking in our pantry here, we're at 0.1 degrees. So we are kind of only just above freezing at the moment. I really hope that all these ice blocks are going to be able to help keep this cold. That was the idea <laughs> over winter to make it, you know, as many of these as possible and to ideally keep on making them. Uh, yeah, it is rising in temperature though. We might just have to go deeper. Hmm. We could maybe keep smoked meat on this level, but then go really deep down and have that be our proper cellar. I guess it's not super efficient, but yeah, we're already at 1.2 degrees Celsius. There of course are other ways to preserve meat and we can do that under research, I believe. And hey, look at that. We actually do have some things that we can look at here. And honestly, I think cooking is probably what we want to go into next. We, there are other things under defensive structures, but I'm not so set on the mechanical traps. If their numbers seem overwhelming, we'll probably do that. And same thing, wooden weaponry, we're not going to go in that direction. Crossbows are very tempting because that could help us out quite a bit with defense at the moment, but cooking, let's go crossbows yeah I think so so the crossbows aren't going to be as effective for Jonathan I think they're going to be more useful for our other folks that aren't as good at shooting the crossbows though I believe are better at penetrating armor so as our foes get more fearsome I think we'll be swapping over to them as the crossbows require mechanical components we're going to have to set up a uh, a order for them down here I think 20 is probably a good number for now. We'll just have to think about how we're going to get metal going forward. And obviously one way is uh, smelting down here. We will need to start mining iron for that though. And it might be worth us having a look to see how much we have. We've got six iron ingots at the moment, which is not as much as I would like. And that's just from some of the weapons that we've been able to recycle. So let's have a look at our map and figure out where the closest iron is for us. It looks like it's probably going to be over here. We've got this great big stream of the stuff. There's also a lot of coal as well. We don't have to worry about, you know, creating it over here with the wood if we just mine it out, eh? Oh, and <laughs> Merchant Caravan. Okay, where are you from, I wonder? <laughs> yep, Circle of Avalon. We are kind of friends with you. Oh man, now I really want to try out our skills against you. Oh, look at all of that. I wonder. I do truly wonder. We've got some iron nuggets up there, but surely we have to turn on a caravan eventually, right? Maybe today is the day. So if we are going to do this, we should probably make a caravan halt and we're going to make it just out here so that they hang around outside. Let's get that built real quick. Meanwhile, we're going to get everyone equipped uh, with a bow of some kind. Lelion is going to do that as soon as she's done with her construction up here. We're going to have a look at getting a position on our top balcony lookout. Okay, Lelion, this is on you. Let's get this constructed as fast as possible. She's not good at construction, so she might fail it. 
Come on, there we go. Okay, that's great. Now we need to get you armed. Looks like we've got another short bow over here. That will do, I think. Okay, there we go. Now, I might have got them out there a little early, but I guess it's better to be prepared, yeah? Actually, no, the merchant's just there. They are, they are getting closer. Everyone, just hold your position. I... Okay, well, we do have range down to there. Jonathan, though, does have the furthest range. Okay, so, <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, I wonder if all of them... All of them are just going to hang back. Let's see what happens here. Oh no, come on. You've got to have the shot out here, surely. Okay, well, we've started taking some shots. I'm just going to micro them to make sure that they're in a position where they can see. Osterid is making his way through. Probably would have been good for us to lock the doors. I mean, they aren't settlers, but at the same time, they're not they're not friends. Let's see if we can get them to take a shot from here. Osterid? Yup, see, that'll do it. Okay, okay. Um, I have no idea how this is going to happen with them just being here, but yep, the merchant is dead. All right, let's keep on shooting. Godwin, Ricard, they are in the walls and they're not. Okay, yeah, so we've kind of just trapped two on the inside. Well, that definitely works out for us. It's hard to tell if some of them are running, some of them are staying. They don't know what they're doing right now, but we have, we have protection. Godwin's down. Looks like Holden can maybe hit us from there, but he's going to have a hard time doing it. How about we focus on Rickard, just because uh, he is going to be able to damage our stuff if he's down there for much longer. Come on. Another good shot should be enough to do it, surely. Okay, Rickard is dead. I want to try and see if I can move them up to the edge here, because I feel like that's just going to be better for them in terms of cover and in terms of seeing our enemies. Oh, Golden Age. Hexham is now the most influential settlement, dominating the entire region. Pilgrims travel far and wide to witness its splendor. <laughs> or, you know, to fear us. They should most certainly fear us. We haven't got a scratch on us so far. We can hit them from the outside here, it seems, still. Uh, it's, it's a little difficult. It is a little difficult. And I think that's probably due to the Merlons not exactly working out in favor for us. They seem to have pretty good protect. Uh, oh, that's a lie. No, I stand corrected. They can hit Holden pretty well there. Some of them, some of the arrows hit the, uh, hit the walls. I am finding the projectiles to be interesting as well. I don't know why they're pink right now, but uh, it is making it a little bit easier to see them. So maybe that's one of the reasons why. This is... This is great. This is absolutely great. I don't know if all of them are going to stick around. I thought I saw one of them running off earlier, but uh, yeah, we're just slowly but surely taking them out and they are going to be leaving behind some very good materials. What? What is that there? A battering ram. A battering ram. I didn't realize. <laughs> I didn't realize that that was a thing. Yeah, so all the stuff that isn't forbidden right now are trade goods that they brought with them. Wooden traps research tables oh boy taking a heavy blow they are turning to flee and we shall let them flee you can go speak of what happened here and hey if you want to bring another caravan feel free <laughs> oh boy we actually did it four of us four of us took on all of them okay humphrey how are you feeling after that i i, I wonder i'm just intrigued to see ugly apparel well we're gonna try and fix that unfortunately he is wearing some flimsy stuff but what can we do they're exhausted let's let them have a good long rest and oh boy do we have some spoils here the spoils of war and uh yeah i didn't even have a look to see what was in here but it looks like there's a decent amount of apple pies oh some ice blocks lots of things to get hauled carrot piles and oh boy a lot of steel yeah that was a good move was it yes i'm gonna say yes it fits us and it fits hexham we are the dominators today and waking up the next morning oh they have so much work to do edith has already gone and chucked on a fantastic look in helm very good look edith and let's hope that maybe they're going to get some weapon upgrades too what i think i'll do is just 
tell them all to just drop their weapons and they'll go and pick up some new ones. We just need to make sure that anything that they did drop, we allow once again. Ah, oh, just look at these shields as well. That is a hefty, hefty shield. 25% cover. I mean, same as this one over here. Flawless cap. Hmm. I think we can probably now change this to exclude flimsy stuff because, uh, yeah, there's a fair amount of clothing there. I'm sure one of them will work for us. And uh, that caravan halt worked. Well, kind of. Obviously, they did make it through here, but that's, uh, that's okay. It might be worth us trying to allow some of them to make their way in here. Oh, and we probably want to move that wooden trap. Let's just go and shift that a square over just so that they can walk around it when they first come in. I love to see that everyone is in sturdy armor now. Got two in light armor and two in gambesons. Jonathan probably doesn't need to be in a gambeson, but he's claimed it as his own, so I'll let him have it. It's been an entire day of back and forth, but <laughs> it's still out here. We are, we are getting there. It's just taking a while. Ah, and we can get our next bit of research thanks to the books that we've been hauling in here. We could go for research three right away, but I think we'll hold off that. We're gonna go for cooking, then uh, work our way through the rest of the research here, axes, maces, swords, etc. But cooking is going to give us this nice limestone hearth, and it's also going to allow us to make lavish meals. Those meals, of course, need to have herbs, so I think we'll have to do a little bit of gardening going forwards because, well, we want to have that nicely seasoned meat. And we will also need to move things around here a little bit, I think. Looks like we can get away with having the uh, station over there. That's a good spot for it. And then, yeah, the new kitchen will go right there. Looks like there was an extra smokehouse that the merchants were carrying, so we'll be sure to chuck it down here with the others. Ah, <sighs> there is a dog. There is a dog. And I don't think you're domesticated. You are. Pinus. Pinus is just a domestic dog. I guess you're not wild. You're not tame. We've got sheep as well. Okay. All right. So I think whenever domestic animals just wander on, they just, they're just ours all of a sudden. So we've got Dixie and we've got Tax out here, apparently. Two sheep just kind of hanging out. Don't know if we want to do anything with them. Maybe. But Edith, uh, we're going to need you to do some taming or some training. Because if we can get you trained, you'll be able to help out inside here again. And that does actually make quite a big difference. And here we have Jonathan making our new hearth. Where we're going to be able to make some pretty nice meals. It looks like we can make regular meals there as well. So we can just get rid of this old campfire. You've served us well all these years. I am liking that we have our candles going again. Our hives have been working well, and it looks like, oh, someone else has been working well. Jonathan, get to bed, you tough bastard, you. Amazingly, we've already gone through all that wood. Can you believe it? Well, we're going to have to go and chop some more, aren't we? Oh, and look at that. A lone traveler from the Church of the Third Coming, David. Welcome, David. We've had Davids here in the past, and I have to say, we are rather partial to Davids. Oh, you're just kind of hanging out over here, aren't you, David? Well, I guess we'll come to you. It'll make carrying your things back a little bit more difficult, but I'm sure we can manage. Or is it that you can't reach us? No, you, you definitely can. You're just, being, you're just being lazy. One thing that's new is that we can send Jonathan into the mix now because, well, he's ruthless, just like these two, meaning he, he likes uh, getting those kills in. However, in this instance, I think it's going to be Edith and uh, Lillian who get here first. I am really liking our emblem on the shield there. It is a good shield too. Okay, it looks like they're just kind of wanting confirmation <laughs> that this is definitely something that we want to be doing. And yes, it most certainly is. Okay, Edith, let's get you in there as well. That was a big hit from Lillian. Edith, no, anything? Yeah, yay, nay. I don't want you to miss out on all the fun, of course. Ah, uh, yeah, looks like they're gonna get them. Who's it gonna be, though? Edith, maybe? He's running. Oh! Oh! -ho! In with the surprise kill! Jonathan Withers. I'm just looking at the region map here, and I'm just astounded as to how the Circle of Avalon here are still friendly with us. We can send caravans to them. 
uh, we can send caravans over here to the Church of the Third Coming. They're hostile. I guess that's the thing. As long as they're not permanently hostile, I think we can send caravans to them. Okay, but yeah, we're still somehow neutral over here. Maybe it's because quite a few of our folks are Oak Brethrens. That could be it. Oh, right here, I see. Practicing Restitutionist. Although, you're just kind of right smack bang in the middle, huh? Jonathan is an Oaken Brethren Zealot. Edith is uh, devout. And Lelion is the other Restitutionist. Okay, I see. Maybe it's just Jonathan's zealotry that's making them like us. I cannot be certain. This bloody trap, I swear, Humphrey nearly lost his leg then. Let's please move this. I've tried so many times to get them to move this. I gotta hope that this is the one. Okay, looks like it might be working this time. Jonathan is heading on over to help. Oh, there we go. Legend, you've saved our legs. How how bad is that, Humphrey? It looks pretty bad. Pe oh, pierced cheek? Okay, not your leg then. But yeah, as you can see, they can kind of just crisscross their way through here now and avoid most, if not all of those traps. Hang on, I just had a thought. If we can train the sheep, can we train them to be war sheep? Or even just to help us with hauling? If we can, I'll consider keeping them around. Ah, Pinus is a year old. I, I do not know how old Ingabel was, but it might be worth seeing if we have a lifespan. Not from what I can see. Hmm. Yeah. Having a look at the moods here, Edith is just in such a good mood mood devouring dream i was chewing this delicious roasted arm and then i realized it was mine and it was still attached but i couldn't stop i was ravenous she enjoyed that dream somehow wow slept in her own quarters entertainments fulfilled ate at a table bloody luxury but yeah this this here is really making the difference and i think it's the same on lelion here oh you stepped into an oak brethren temple briefly she must be refueling something there unfortunate but she does have the job satisfaction bonus as well so that's going for her jonathan you're in a pretty good mood as well uh, obviously that is definitely helping and then finally humphrey you know he doesn't have the big bonuses but he is still a happy lad Ah, you know what? I was promising to build some more chairs. I know it's way more than what we need, but I think we're going to do it just along there like so. Take a moment with me, if you will, to admire Hexham in the sunset here. It's a nice looking structure. There is so much more that I want to do with it as well. Well, that's super sweet. The tree that we have by the grave of Ingabel, this little apple tree, blossoming well 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 the philosophers of the natural order are here the academics gathered like a storm of angry crows their black gowns flapping comically as they huddled strategizing their great minds were entirely focused on the wrecking of hexham except for its books which they coveted and meant to steal well we won't allow that, will we? I'm not going to have a look at the exclamation mark. Let's just see how many folks we've got. Okay, 12 enemies in the formation of a flying V, it looks like. So, these are our folks. Clement is butt-ass naked. Okay, Clement Bradwine or Brawadine. Yeah. Oh, dear mod. Dear mod over here is uh, pretty nicely decked out in what looks like plate armor, I'd have to say. Yep, sturdy plate armor. Okay, well, if we can strip that off your dead body, I'd be more than happy to. So, we'll let them dally about for a little bit, but I think they're going to be rushing towards our walls before too long. And looking at them, I don't see a single, well, I was going to say a single archer. Old one does have a crossbow, and so does Eustace, but that's it. So, oh, Ethelgar as well. So, okay, there's three archers. We can manage three archers. Oh, but there's a fog. Okay, that is going to um, impact our ranged abilities. It will impact them as well. And it looks like they've got a ways to go before they can reach us. Yeah, we're all the way over here. Okay, so we're probably all right to just hang out near here as long as we're all near here. Uh, Jonathan's a little further away. Okay, you know what? Let's just call everyone back. So Edith has a ways to run as well by the looks of things. Let's hope you're not going to get crossed off by them. No, I, I think you're okay. And I believe that Jonathan, yeah, he's made his way back now. Okay, so Edith, you're the last one out there. Although, do we really fear for Edith? No, we fear for anyone that crosses her path. 
and it uh, doesn't look like they're going to. They're still a ways behind her. Although these lighter armored folks, I think they're probably going to make it up there first. Their archers are lagging behind. There we go, Edith. Back through the walls. Let's get a bow in your hands. All right. Look at this lot. We are ready for them, I say. Oh, and pretty good timing as well. <sighs> Looks like Dermot is actually leading the charge here. The heavily armored foe of the philosophers. Let's see if their strategy is any better than <laughs> the ones that came before them. In just a moment, we'll see our arrows start to rain down upon Diamod. We're going to have a hard time hitting him in this little alcove here. But you know what? Hey, staggered him there for a moment. A few misses. I imagine some of it will bounce off their armor. We probably want to try and go for Ethelgar in the back there if we can. But at the same time, I kind of just like to let them do their thing. I'm going to trust that they know best that they are doing what they need to do to win here. Because if we just kind of injure a few of them, it means they're going to be a lot slower at getting away. We should be able to take out more that way. And so far, they're having a hard time hitting us all the way up there. It is much harder for them to shoot up at that angle. They don't see as much of us. And these Merlons here give us a decent kind of cover bonus, I believe. I'm not sure if we can see that exactly. That's the stability. Oh, cover effectiveness, 55%. So, yeah. I imagine that's pretty good. Dear Mod seems to be the only one that's attacking this front door here. It will slowly start to get damaged. It's got 500 hit points altogether, but uh, yeah, it's hard to tell how much damage Dear Mod is actually doing. Eustace is nearly dead. Hey, there we go. All right, who was that? Was that Jonathan? Did you just get a bonus from killing someone? It wasn't you then, was it? It must have been Humphrey, because none of the others have the bonus from killing as of yet. But they're, uh, <laughs> they're just all kind of hanging out here, you know, some of them shooting back at us. But most of them can't do anything while they're waiting for Diamond here. They will eventually get through here and start to charge down. I hope we can still shoot down from here. Oh, the first shot actually hits. Oh, I freaked out for a second then. We're okay, but they have gotten in. Edith did get hit. Athelstan is dead. It was a marauder, and when they're all grouped together like this, I think we stand a much better chance of actually hitting them. And they are, they are doing a bit better of a job than I thought they would. Getting in here, destroying a lot of our, you know, precious resources. These things we are going to look at moving to an upper level here. I feel like that's just going to be smarter for us to do. Look at all those injuries. Yeah, they're not holding together all that well. A few more good shots should take down a few more of them. Mordred is dead. We'd like to see that. It looks like Dermod still just alive. I really want their armor. Okay, Dermod is dead. <laughs> there we go. Ask and you shall receive. What's the condition of the plate though? Maybe Andrew can tell us he's about to die. Actually pretty good. Well, we're going to allow that. I hope one of our peeps here will be able to wear it. No more deaths yet. The archers at the back there are still just kind of chilling out. I might want to have a look at getting Jonathan to attack Oldwin, just because if we could get some crossbows, I'd be pretty happy with that. Although at the same time, he seems to be pretty set on attacking others. Yeah, they, they haven't even gotten to this door yet. And they've got two doors to get through there. They aren't reinforced doors. I might want to make them reinforced. But right now, <laughs> right now we don't have to worry about that. Oh, wow. Only two left on the inside here. Edith, the only one that's injured. Henry's dead. Alvia is dead. And now it's just Purnell. Purnell seems to be a little bit harder for us to hit. So how about we start to make our way down there with Jonathan. As for our ladies, we can't hit you, can we? You are outside of our range. That does mean that the crossbows probably have a greater range. I wonder if we just run down here, if they'll come closer. Because they don't have anyone they can hit now. Hmm... Maybe, maybe not. What I can do quickly is go and just drop these weapons for Edith and for Lillian. If we take them off drafted, the first thing they should do is go and auto equip a weapon uh, or, or not. They might just go to sleep. Uh, <laughs> didn't think about that one, did I? Lillian, how about we just go equip that staff? Edith, let's equip your war fork. Okay, now you two follow me. Oh, Jonathan just went out the front door. Jonathan, buddy, Back up you go. <laughs> what was that all about? Oh, Humphrey, you're in a sticky situation here. Uh, yeah, we, I don't like that. Come back inside there, lad. 
Lillian, okay, yeah, that is good. Do what you do. Jonathan, I am confident that you can manage this. Purnell is dead, okay. Humphrey, get... Okay, I was going to say get back inside, but we don't need to worry about that. Jonathan Withers did the most damage yet again. Humphrey, this time though, took the most damage. Victory for us though. Victory indeed. So I think if we're quick here with Lillian, okay, well, we should be able to at least get one. We need to just try and run ahead, although, ah, there's a wolf in the way. Of course there is. Okay, well, <laughs> I guess you all might be lucky. Or maybe not. Let's see if we can chase ahead of you here. Right, now I think the technique to actually hitting them is getting ahead of them and then attempting to make the strike. Let's see if we can make that work. Yep, that seems to be the way to do it. Much slower now. Okay, we chase ahead of you. We stop. We take a strike. There we are. Now our other mate is a lot further away and he's completely healthy. Old one, you get to live and tell the tale, don't you? Okay, everyone else, you can just relax. Go take care of your wounds. Wow, we got a lot out of that yet again. Let's uh, let them relax and check on those wounds. Humphrey, how bad was that? Okay, you got a pierced leg muscle, pierced cheek, and Edith, a pierced cheek. Just a little bit of pain. Nothing that Lelion can't fix when she wakes up in the morning. Have your food, have a munch. Oh, Humphrey, you're like kind of gushing blood. I feel like that's probably not as good, right? Yeah, we're probably going to have to wake up Lilion. We'll just let you go and <laughs> grab maybe a drink. I'm not sure what you're doing, but you're bleeding all over the floor. It's, uh, <laughs> it's unbecoming of you. All right, get in bed. We'll see to treating you right away. Time to wake up, Lillian. You can go back to sleep later. Let's just make sure that we get these wounds seen too. And there we are. Much, much better. And so, with that, with our four cannibals, all snug in their beds, we are going to leave the cannibal keep on this rainy spring day. As the wolves feast upon the corpses of our enemies, we will recover from them what we can. A successful defense, but one that has taught us that our walls are not impenetrable. There are only four of us here. We must be ready for what is yet to come. And I sincerely hope that we will be ready. But that, Legionnaires, will wrap us up for today's episode. I'd like to thank you all for joining me for another one. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider leaving a comment or a like to let me know if you enjoyed the show. For now, I have been Rykon. You have all been awesome. And until next time, stay tuned. And finally, I'd like to extend a great big thank you to the Legion on Patreon, who continue to make this cannibalistic content possible.